and said, across the water, looking at the World Trade Center, it's, it was still there when I started, and then looking at Wall Street and uh, having that whole concept of, yes, the USA and Manhattan, and th I did, it got kind of cocky and kind of felt good every time I walked over the bridge and ran and I saw that stuff. I was like, yeah, something clicked and I, I, I created this puppy. So, I'm not going to give you a background, no, uh, I'm not going to tell you a chapter, I'm just going to jump in here and tell you a story. I don't know if you're going to get it. <laughs> Good idea. But, uh, we're going to try. We're going to try. All right. I have to jog to make the catch up to the trio. We make an abrupt left, and our trail ends at the start of a dirty, dry, dirty side street. A small mountain of wet, bad trash that stays sloppily against the wall of our left. I look to my right, and I see up. I look to my right, and up I see a large, square, hand painted sign in Thai above a shabby front of a restaurant. I imagine that the hand-painted sign translates to, ba 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 to ba banana cup. Boy, I'm having a hard time here. <laughs> Shouldn't have done the wine. As in, as in by the yellow or maybe sign. you needed more. <laughs> In the window at the left of the door, the handwriting on the chalkboard to the right of the door is shaky and erratic as though it has the first time writer, first time writer in English and he used chalk. And English is not the writer's first language. I laugh as I read the chalkboard. Flesh, fresh food, daily. No yesterday fish. No salsa meat. No cat, no dog, no rat meat. Don't ask. You want to eat here? List challenges. Trust me, they're clean and the food is excellent. Geek says as he opens the door. Liz and Nikki enter. I follow. Shredded dry banana leaves and shades of green, yellow, sunburst orange, sunset red, brown, pad the uh, weathered wooden floor. The interior is a honeycomb grotto with a high ceiling and has a feel as old as time. Faded and decaying posters and party banners, party banners, Happy New Year 2000 are fixed to the thick cherry wood beams overhead. The hardwood walls are dust free, dark and hold the scents of thousands of meals. The restaurant is crowded and noisy. Solo, couples, parties of tens or more. Everyone is dressed in fine clothes. The place is hopping. The food must be good. A skinny waiter with thin black hair that lies flat and lifeless on his head approaches us. Eat a trap, he says. Four. Geek. Oh man, I'm sweating like a pickup here. <laughs> four. Geek states as he displays four fingers. The waiter seats us at the table by the window with a view of an apartment complex. He deals out the menus and hurries away. You speak Thai, Geek? I ask. Just enough to get fed. Then, with a polite raise of a finger to a passing waiter, he says, So my pop? The waiter smiles with a nod, eases over to the bank of waiters standing by the bar. He speaks to a very skinny guy to his far lap. The waiter appears at the table with his order pad at the ready. Four sing high. Large bowl of Tom Ka for the table. Geek makes a circular motion with his hand about the table to accentuate for table. Mosach, Nuhong, fried quail eggs, Tom Mom. Geek says. The waiter nods and exits, weaving his way toward the kitchen. What did you order? Liz asks. Four Thai beers, soup, and a bunch of appetizers, Geek replies. I heard fried quail eggs, Nikki says with a sour scowl. Yep, top them off with soy sauce and black pepper. Brilliant, Geek says with a tasty grin. Now, not convinced, sh Nikki shakes her head. No, thank you. <laughs> so we sit in silence and we take in the action of the banana cup. From what I see around me, the portions are huge. Plates thick with veggies, nuts, fish, and meat, accompanied by dozens of tiny ceramic bowls filled with a multitude of sauces. Appearing like an apparition, a waitress serves our beers. She exits the scene in the same fashion. A toast to life, Geek says, and so we do. The waiter who took our order appears with friends. The servers place food on our table with effortless expediency. I set it to utensil, chopsticks. The old scoop and shovel, hand in mouth, school of dining, I say. Geek nods and fills the soup bowl. He hands the bowl to Liz. Geek says, slip slowly, it's hot. He fills the bowl for Nikki and I and then for himself. He takes a slow, dignified sip of steaming brown liquid. I point to the red, hollow, oblong dish placed in the center of the table with a dozen dainty and attractive shells covered with chocolate brown speckles and stuffed with their fried former contents neatly plated. Quail eggs, I ask Geek? He nods. He reaches out with his chopstick and snares one. He sprinkles ground back black pepper over it, then dips the soy sauce and pops it in his mouth. Instantly, his face is awash in ecstasy. Great, he offers as if some hand-won victory has been achieved. 
I reach out with my chopsticks and follow Geek's plan. And damn, it does taste good. It's like being kissed by a god. In my reverie, I notice the shell has a delicate shade of blue inside. That's a pretty shell, says Nikki. I know it and toss it aside and die for another. You should have one before me and Geek knock him out. Liz reaches out with her chopsticks and picks up a small egg. She dips it in the soy sauce and dusts it with black pepper. She pops it in her mouth. She smells. She tilts her head to the side. She seems very content. Then it happens rather quickly. Yet I note the movement in slow motion. I see two web agents enter from the left quarter, just as we have. I see three more agents approach from the right. Now I can see four emerge from the kitchen. Geek and Nikki's eyes tell me that there are agents behind me, just a sheet of glass between us. There is a family of seven at the table on my right. I can reach out and touch the child in the high chair. There is another large group of civilians at the table on my left, behind Liz. Geek and Nikki are hemmed by a row of dining couples. Looks like I have to sit that out on my hands now. This is going to be fun. One of the agents places a barrel of a gun to Nikki's temple, and sink all around the table. Barrels of slender, nasty black metal kiss flesh, except for me. The barrel of the weapon with my name on it points at my right eye. The restaurant grows from quiet to absolute silence. Clean out the diners, orders an all too familiar voice, the man I call Satan, my boss. Griffin eases into view. Apollo, you had me thinking you were some kind of voodoo machine. Can't track you, not with the dozens of bugs I got planted all over you. Not in the all-around, and what is with your mind? Petting puppies and flying kites? The memories you're leaving in the all-around are jacking up the system. He pauses, rubs his right temple with the hole of his palm. Hell, I can't even blow you up just for fun. It's frustrating. Then it all came together when I learned you were Geek. Geek and his special boy. Griffin stands next to Geek. My God, man, I thought you had learned your lesson. What was your name? Oh, yes, yeah, Ophelia. She was a lovely woman. We were very happy together. Then you pissed off everybody. <laughs> I look forward to discussing that with you later. Griffin turns to Nikki, and with a cobra flip, backhands her across the face. She takes the slap like a kiss. She smiles at him, and I know she's laughing inside. And you're the chameleon making life so miserable for us, the good guys. Where's the jump one file? It's on Geek Smot, Nikki says. On Geek Smot. Griffin repeats. Okay, Geek, where is your mod? Oh, I need to reach into my jacket pocket for my remote. No, you stay still. Just tell us where it's parked. The mop travels. I call it when I need it. Griffin nods. That's the answer he expected. Sergeant, please reach into what pocket? Right pocket. The sergeant locates Geek's remote. Show it to him. Griffin instructs the sergeant. Geek studies the remote. It's about two clicks east of here. What button will call it back? Blue. Griffin nods at the sergeant. The sergeant presses the blue button. How long will it take to get here, Griffin asks. About two minutes. Fine. How did you find this pork butt? I look at Griffin. Not only the restaurant, <laughs> not, <laughs> not only the restaurant, but the whole new look we have. And how did you easily pick us out of the crowd? With a little help from your friend, he walks over to Liz and extends his fat paw to her. You're a good citizen. You can go. The agent withdraws his gun from her head. Liz doesn't take Griffin's hand. She stands on Agent, and with a stone dry eye, she stares him down. Tell him why I did it. Griffin smiles. It's not a pleasant type of smile. He looks at her, then at Nikki, and then at me and Nikki. You did it because you're sensible. You're a good citizen, states Griffin. I did it because you promised to release my mother, so let her go. Griffin is shocked. I don't think, he's ever, I don't think I've ever seen that face from him. It's funny. Then he, spits his reply. then he spits his reply. Don't get the manning with me, citizen. I will put you in the cell next to your loving mother. Great conversations without any physical contact for years, for the rest of your life. How does that sound to you? Breaking my balls. I ain't got time for this. Is he? <laughs> I, can't keep, I can't keep with that one, so, uh... Alright. We skip this. Uh, <laughs> get her out of my sight. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> get her out of my sight, he says with an offhand dismissal. The closest agent grabs Liz's, grabs Liz's bicep and rushes her from the restaurant. I get the feeling she's trying to resist, but she can't match his muscle. She's truly doing a good job to keep up with him and not falling to the floor and getting dragged from the room. Liz glances back at me before she flies around the corner. I'm not a happy man right now. How long has she worked for you, I ask. I secured her services before you came out of that coma. The space snatched her, and I don't know what the hell happened. Now, now I understand what happened here. You rolled over on space. You're taking the man's money. Have you no honor? Oh, what was it? A hundred million? You know you can't keep that money. 
I knew about it, Geek says to me. I knew Liz was working with Griffin. I studied Geek, trying to figure out his play. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I monitor all communication to and from my rig. Liz had sent 15 text messages to Griffin. Her contact lenses are cameras. She's really scared. She's a smart girl who'll listen to reason, Griffin interjects. I'll lay it all out for in a neat little package. Her mom can go home before you guys are even locked up. Once I retrieve the disk and the files, I'll personally hand them over to the president. Then a cushy cabinet post for me. Respect, purse, no more handling riffraff. He looks at each, of the, each and one of us just in case we didn't realize we were the riffraff. The greedy asshole sn mm, sorry. <laughs> snatches oh, the, the curse jar, Stephanie. Fingers. He even takes time to dip it in the soy sauce. Now this is good, he states with a flick of his wrist. Then he uses the napkins to clean his fingers. I see the geek. We gotta help Liz. Geek nods. Shouldn't be much of a thing for you, me, and Princess. Sweet. Now I'm a princess, says Nikki. Griffin laughs. You better think about helping yourselves. We are thinking like that. I don't know what to play, but I have a feeling Geek's got the game in hand. Where's this mod of yours? He snatches the remote from the sergeant's hand and, study it, and studies it. What's this? It's blinking. That means the ship is outside, Geek says. Who's outside? Griffin asks the sergeant. Mercer, the sergeant replies. Don't tell me. Call him and confirm the vehicle. The sergeant nods and does as he's told. Mercer, do you see a... The sergeant looks to Geek. It's a big silver vehicle with twin fat horizontal red and white stripes, Geek says. Big silver vehicle with red and white stripes. Negative. So what's the deal, Griffin asks. Have a quail egg, Greek says to Nikki. What? Hell no, I'll take a cigarette. As a fat man will testify, they're damn tasty, and a little taste of heaven before Griffin sends us to God knows where. Geek says, do you know that quail eggs were successfully hatched in space on Mir? Back in 1992? What is it with you and the damn quail eggs? <laughs> if you can't have it, you can't, if you, if you have it, you can't share it. And if you share it, you can't have it. Geek says with a laugh. What? Griffin says. It's a secret, Nikki says with a laughing sigh. She reaches out and grabs a, carol, a quail egg. Drenches it with soy sauce and pepper. She looks around the room, closes her eyes, and pops it in her mouth. She chews, swallows, opens her eyes, and says, wow. Then she goes quiet, entering the gates of bliss. See? Settle down, girl. I wouldn't steer you wrong. Smiling geek says to Nikki. Soft tones from, a new, uh, from the new Cambodian pop singer, Jai Sapkanana, eases through the anxious... Uh, speakers in the restaurant. I can feel eyes all around me. The man directly across from the table seems to be monitoring my breathing and watching my eyes for any signs that I might just reach out and kill someone. I think about music. Her notes float and swell, connecting like smoke rings and wrinkling and slowly dissipating from the air. Jai's spellbinding beautiful voice could captivate and soothe all but the coldest and harshest of hearts. Naturally, it has no effect on Griffin. Where's your goddamn ship? He's sorry, love. He snarls, shaking the remote at Geek. I, I did, I did proofread this. I, I, I thought I would <laughs> jump over these when I was doing it, but uh, you get caught up. So sorry, Izzy, but you've heard this live anyway. So <laughs> it's still in stealth mode. Hit the blue button again. You, Greek explains to Griffin in a good-natured smile. Of course, you've got an invisible ship. You got to explain that to him. Griffin replies. Griffin replies as he hits the blue button. Hot blue flashes wash over the restaurant. Everyone that didn't have a quail egg falls to the floor like fat water balloons clumsily dropped by a gleeful toddler. Griffin looks around, disoriented, then fast mad. He reaches for his coat. I jump up, trample over our dining table. I see Greek, <clears throat> I see Geek and Nikki save the beers. I hit the fat man with, with a head and shoulder tackle. The crown on my head busts his nose and his blood flows down his face like the waters of a raptured dam. Flat on his back on a banana leaf padded floor. Dazed and in pain, with my right hand, a vice grip around his meaty throat. Tears well in Griffin's eyes as he coughs and spits and slaps in my arm, using a breakaway technique that has taught in self-defense class. I'm a breath away from punching his lights out, but Nikki speaks up. Easy, Apollo. Don't hurt him. I need to talk to him. She comes around, stands at my side, and sneers down at a broken Griffin. Guess who's not going to hobnob with the president, she mocks. She sips her beer, hands one to me. I look out behind me and see the agents outside are all in the same condition as the agents inside. Geek in his science. I sip my beer. I pat Griffin down, pull out a weapon from the inside padded, uh, pocket of his jacket, and put it in my pants pocket. We'll make a good hostage as we make our exit, I say, and yank Griffin to his feet. No need. Everyone within a 300 meter perimeter suffered the same fate as the agent around you if they didn't have a quail egg. Alright, this is driving me nuts. What's in the quail eggs? Nikki asks. <laughs> A pesticide that was used in the last century. 
has mutated the bonding enzymes in the eggs of waterfowl, specifically marked in quail eggs. The thick white strands that anchor the yolk to the eggshell are rich with Debifuseron, or Debi. Debi raises the contazenzines levels in the frontal lobe. Light light, blue light at the right frequency and strobrite can induce a minor, a minor catatonic fugue. Except that the brain is tainted with Debi. The skitty feeling that you had after eating the eggs is a byproduct of Debi. A sign that you won't be affected by the blue strobe. By the blue strobe. Science is pure evil, Nikki says. She reaches out with a bottle. Geek smiles, clinks bottles with Nikki and then mine. We take long sips from our, draw, our bottles. I shove grip before him. Looks like being a fat, greedy slob paid off for you this time. It's <laughs> off! He replies with a bite. He wipes blood away from his face. I shove him forward. Wait! He shouts at me, then reaches out for a, a near table, snatches a napkin, uses the napkin to soak up the blood. Much as I <laughs> So you must. No, the owner, in order to have the strobe light set up, Geek, uh, Nikki nudges Geek, I am the owner. I set the lights up long ago for just such an occasion. You and I got to spend more time together, Nikki says. I got all the time in the world, Princess. Geek replies as he holds the door open. We, read, we exit the restaurant and I see dozens of bodies lying motionless on the sidewalk and on the street. Moths zip fly overhead, never pausing to gawk at the spectacle of sleeping street people. This isn't permanent, is it? I ask Geek. No. They'll be out for four to five hours, wake up with some disorientation, some will throw up all over themselves, some will complain of memory loss. He shrugs his shoulders and walks to his vehicle. Nikki follows, then Griffin and me. Apollo! I recognize that voice. I turn to see Liz. I stop his geek and Nick as Nikki gathered my size at my side. Liz stops before us. She hugs Geeks and says, tell me you're responsible for this. I know you're responsible for this. Yes, I am, Geek says. He hands her a bottle of beer. And here I thought you were just taking two beers for himself. Liz pushes Griffin out of the way and hugs. We all hug and kiss. I feel the girls. I give the girls a quick hug. Come on, I said. Let's get them out and let's get out of here. The ladies rush in. I shove the fat man into the vehicle. The door zips, zips shut behind me. I notice slight lift and we're on the move. All right, that's it, kids. Now we don't need to buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I lost about 20 pounds this year. <laughs> that was great. Uh, that if was I could great. read better, it would have been four or five. No, you did great. <laughs> I'm sorry.